there's this philosophy that I I hold by that um, you are what you see, right? Mm -hmm. What you feel is capable is what you've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, it's true. If, if 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 you want to be a doctor, you only want to be a doctor because you've seen a doctor before. If you haven't seen an astronaut before, you can't even in your in your diction you can't put an astronaut. So it's true. You should you should be curious, and then you should be a sponge if you're a kid, if 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 you are younger, to be able to accept all knowledge. That's not. I don't think there's bad information whatsoever. Um, mm. Just learn as much as you can, because um, it, it it would it would open you to the many options that there are there. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Don't be don't be easy to box yourself into something particular. Um, right. You're welcome to this amazing episode. So in this episode, we have a wonderful guest. He's a young man who um, I can tell you he is doing well. And uh, I, I have no doubt he's going to go uh, places. But he has a lot of nuggets to share uh, with us. And I'm just going to open the floodgate for uh, for him to share some of the things, his experiences, his uh, the things that he's seen, um, the relationships that he's built, the skill set that he's acquired, uh, so that you know, you and I, our children, everyone can benefit from some of these uh, stories or some of these uh, career journeys. So today we have no other than my uh, wonderful uh, friend. His name is uh, Kwame, uh, Kwame Ajay Yabua. Uh, Kwame means, if you are not from Ghana, Kwame means that he was born on a Saturday, right? So we, we normally name people after this. So uh, Kwame, you are uh, welcome to our channel very very oh. welcome <laughs> thank you thank you very much and happy to be here awesome awesome so just to give a little bit brief uh, uh background of of Kwame and what what he does and why he's 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 uh, even uh coming in to share or why i'm bringing him, him in to share his story is that Kwame has um a wonderful breadth of experience and we're going to get into that um he Currently works for a company called Capco. Uh, I think they are management consulting. I think and uh, I think management and IT consulting firm. Mm -hmm. well, I think one of the largest ones that are doing amazing stuff. He, he probably will go a little bit into what he does there. And prior to that, he worked at Bank of America, um, and and he's been in the area of risk. I think it's risk management. Am I, am I wrong? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so he's, he worked at Bank of America, and then he also he's also worked for a couple of uh, insurance stroke reinsurance co uh, companies. So we'll get into that as well. Some people don't even understand what reinsurance is. Yeah. So you, me, I, I understand insurance. So you probably have to educate us on what reinsurance is. And um, he, he went to Columbia University in New York City. It's one of the best. Uh, so. Kwame, you are welcome. There's a whole lot that we're going to unpack. I have not gone through 30% of your profile yet. I have not done that because your profile is amazing. And uh, Kwame is a, is a diehard Man United fan. So I don't know how that is oh, yeah. going. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't know just how, how the, that the, is going the, for you. United, there's a United game going on right now. But then because of how much love I love for this. Oh yeah, I, we appreciate I, I, I you. To be here. Oh man, we appreciate you. Man. You are you are you are top notch. You are top notch. We appreciate you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So so Rami, um, if you don't mind, can you share a little bit about uh what what, what you do? I mean, do give us a brief overview of what Cap does. I know you are not speaking in the capacity for the organization but you, know, we, you only speak in the capacity of you wanting to use your story to help inspire or motivate other young people from african descent like you are so and we can help yeah. but ask what organization do you work for and what do they do so we, we're just asking you based on on that premise not to be nosy about oh you know, that's your, fine that's fine <laughs> If I work for Capco. Um, Capco, as it is now, it's a it's a Ypro company. So Ypro is a bigger company, multinational yes. company, 
specific to IT. Um, okay. But bringing it back to Capco, why, why I do that? I'm a management consultant. Mm -hmm. And specifically, um, I'm, I'm in the finance, risk, and compliance practice domain. So Capco has a bunch of um, offerings. We call it domains. And then I, I align to the risk and finance, risk, financial risk and compliance um, domain. Um, okay. So Capco originally was, I think I think the name Capco has to do with capital markets. So okay. um, how it came up was, and um, the 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 owner or the person who started Capco had experience in capital markets okay. um, between UK and the New New York, and okay. then started consulting. That's pretty much has grown um, over time. Capco isn't necessarily a big top four consultant, but then it's like a mid sized reasonable okay. size uh, consulting firm. But what I like most about Capco is just the culture, right? It, um, wow. Be yourself at, at work, um, more of problem solving and figuring mm. out an issue, what it is. And um, and I mean, I've been I've been with Capco five months and I have nothing wrong it. with being an ambassador for Capco here. Yeah. Oh, but wow. I mean, I mean, dialing back to what I actually do when mm -hmm. in terms of financial risk and compliance. Um, right. So my background, Initially, I mean, when going back to Ghana, I did my undergrad in math, a concentrating actuarial, and then I okay. came over to do actuarial science masters. So my background has almost teetered around risk. Um, and as we dive in, wow. I'll, I'll probably talk more about how I ended up in risk management. But I've yes. always had a passion. To, yes, yes. I've always had a passion to understand what risk financial institutions are exposed to, um, kind of understand it. And um, the overarching aim is at some point to bring it back to Ghana, right? So, yes, uh, it's it, it's always been something that fascinates me understanding what mm -hmm. is risk, what is, and diving into what is financial risk and how you go about it. Okay, so, yeah. okay, that, amazing. Yeah, so so I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna hold your feet to the fire there. I, I think it's there was a time I I interviewed a guest. Um, his name is Ade, and uh, he. Uh, works at uh, Goldman Sachs and he does mm -hmm. liquidity risk. So he's kind of opened our eyes into all these kind of uh, big Wall Street, uh, how they handle risk and all those kind of things. It was fascinating. So I think from the, your standpoint, risk may be a little bit different. He, so he talked about liquidity risk. Yeah. But I, I see you talk more um, about operational type of risk and yeah. those kind of things. Can you, so when somebody says operational risk, what does it mean? So, so operational risk. I mean, if I would break it down, mm -hmm. so you could you could you could see it as in so a bank has to operate, a bank mm -hmm. has to go about giving money, taking money, investing it, right, and making profit. Yes. So the risk that that operation will break, right? So it's um, the risk of people and systems. Pretty okay. Much. So okay. Very condensed. So one is the people who help the bank operate. The risk that they will do something bad, or Another is the system that the bank used to operate the risk that that would not work. So you could you could think about it as in could be third party, somebody that you are working with, right? Could be a vendor, or it could be internal fraud. Um, your client, your customers, your cost, internal fraud being your employees. So it could be a bank teller stealing money from you, a bank teller taking oh, details wow. from a customer and then using it back. So for i mean for close to the past three years what i did at bank of america was we were forecasting um stress scenarios so scenarios where operational risk hits the roof like all things wow. comes to not um case in point COVID. right so mm -hmm. back in 2022 i remember um our forecast that we do for sika the feds okay. made big banks have to redo it again and every all the executives they were very zoning on what's the offshore estimate so um so pretty much that's what that's what i've been doing mm. so understanding what what risk the bank is exposed to in terms of doing business specifically yes. with operating business so um depending on what kind of financial institution that you are so if you're a big one like bank of america they call it operational risk but then if you okay. say a credit union they call it process risk or they call it transactional okay. risk Right, but it comes down to how the risk that is inherent in doing your business as a financial institution. So um, 
I've, hmm. I've come to understand a lot about it. It fascinates me because it hits, yes. it hits a lot of places. Um, and I'll probably places. talk about this. So um, yeah. we're, we're forecasting the total operational loss when it comes to stress testing and Zika. Hmm. One thing that hmm. we did was what, in scenario... What is Zika, though? Oh, um, so what, what, is comprehensive... No, now nah, nah, you put me on the spot. We normally call it Zika, and I have to figure out what they put me on. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, some, sometimes the acronyms are so you're so used to it that you don't even care about what, yeah, what it true. means. No, but but it, basically, that. it's 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 something to do with your, I mean, in, in risk management, right? I, I could explain exactly what Zika is. So when yeah, okay, 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 let's do that. When 2008 happened, right? Um, and then there was a financial crisis, um, and everything was yes. uh, the the feds have to bail people out. Mm -hmm. the, the Fed came out and Obama signed a, a bill um, and then to to pretty much ensure the economy against something like that happening in the future. Um, big bank mm -hmm. holdings have to present to the Fed their capital plan and the, and the, the capital okay. plan has to be signed off, right? So that goes into Sika and DFAS. So every first quarter, um, the Fed come out with some variables and then the variables will be for extreme scenarios so it could be inflation being maybe 13 percent 15 percent or okay. unemployment being 30 percent or whatever right and then okay. based on those variables big bank holdings have to pretty much give back to the feds this is our capital plan to it what i did mm -hmm. from ops risk was we forecasted the stress scenario that goes into the forecast into the capital plan so it was an overarching yeah so that's that's the natural seeker but um wow. darling and what i was mentioning what i was talking about is um how we came up with the operational risk um was but, let, let, let me let me just um seeker just go with me i didn't know this yeah, is yeah. comprehensive capital analysis review Review, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah that's I've, it. I've, I've learned something today. Yeah, yeah so see, God, be fast, yeah. But um, okay. so dialing back, how we came up with the ops risk forecast was mm -hmm. um, we, we use um, so there's two versions. So the one version was um, BAU losses, so losses that would happen okay. that we know about it, but then we also looked at very severe losses. And how we came up with severe losses was um, scenario analysis. So scenario okay. analysis is where the bank would come up with a scenario, a stream scenario, and say, if this happens, what will be the losses? So it's kind of, it was very mm. cool. Um, that's that is one nice. That was, yeah, there was one that was proposed that, I mean, never went through though, but I like sharing it with people because it kind of piques people's brain. So <laughs> yeah, the scenario was, um, assuming it came out that the bank was, um, you the, the AI the bank used to hire employees was racist, right? And what, oh, would man. Be, what, what would be the financial the loss to the bank, right? So, oh if, man, I want to know that one. Oh, I, know, I want to know that one, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that, that's, an example. that's a very interesting example. But then also there's there's cases of um, if, if a rogue trader decides mm -hmm. to do whatever they want, what would be the losses the bank would then care? Oh, or yeah. if there's external yeah. fraud or if there's internal fraud. So it cuts across a lot. Or cyber attack recently. Um, Man, and so so your job is it's job your job makes you think so so weirdly bad, but it's it's fun though. Exactly. I mean, just the model. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's that's like, that's an intense risk, right? That's risk. Right? So, yeah, that, that, that fascinates. Yeah, so so yeah, that would be interesting. So even thinking about climate climate change, so we have to think okay. about what happens if there were landslides in Seattle or landslides in Florida how that affects the bank. So you have to come up with a dollar value for it. So it's amazing. It was cool. It was cool, yeah. So, ah, yeah, so they, uh, you know, when we're in class, you know, I mean, in like uh, high school and, and, and uni and things, you know, sometimes you get all these guys, some of them are very weird, right? They, they always come up with very, uh, what do you call it, um, long tail kind of scenarios things that are yeah, way out yeah, of the edge right yeah, yeah. those yeah. kind of guys i think they'll, they'll do very well in your field black swan yeah black swan yeah, <laughs> yeah black swan yeah. yeah those kind of guys like they think very weird it's like crazy scenarios and not knowing that there's a there's a place for that yeah. in, in terms of career choice <laughs> i'm so, so so you think about it as in if somebody was able to predict covid would happen and then the effects of covid 
that's exactly oh, where yeah. I am. And that's exactly coming up with forecasters, yeah. Huh. Interesting, interesting. So let me let me ask this question. So if let's say um, I know management consulting firms, they normally would send you as a consultant. Sometimes you sit within a third party organization to to help them out, right? So yeah. if if I were a company and I came to you and you came in to assess my risk, what 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 are some of the signals? What are the things that you would need to to do your job? Or to, yeah, to that's quickly. That's, that's an apt question. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. So the, the current role that I'm in now, um, we have a client out west, it's a credit union. So it's a smaller okay. company. Um, okay. And maybe once we delve in, I'll, I'll go to why I decided to come into consulting, right? So okay. it's a small credit union. And then as part of um, the regs for credit unions, when you hit a certain um, assets bracket, so 10 billion being one, that's a okay. lot of regulations that you have okay. to do in compliance. So one of them is um, okay. an ERM implementation, right? So the bank has to show to okay. regulators when they come to it, when they come for examinations that they have a built enterprise-wide risk management program. So okay. our clients, That's ER. yeah. So our clients, mm -hmm. they 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 contacted us. We we bid for the for for the contracts for uh, engagement, and we won. Okay. So basically, what we what what we are doing okay. is so we. We are with them, and obviously they know they have risk, right? So you know there's risk in doing business, but how do you quantify the yes. risk? Um, your risk is different from another credit union's risk. So the the, the most yes. basic thing that you do from the get go is getting the taxonomy right, right? So if if I say mm -hmm. A is a risk for me, what does A mean, right? So defining A as a risk. Um, and also defining what controls I have to mitigate A if I want to mitigate A. To mitigate. So, okay. Yeah. So so so, okay. so the basics, the basics tools that we use first is um and, and you do this through a risk assessment, right? So building a risk assessment, okay. having meeting with business leads, meeting with um, VPs to understand what are the risks that are out there, right? So Luckily, regulators normally they have like a cookie cut spread of, and for credit unions, it's seven risks. And then out of okay. those seven risks, we kind of have to decide how do we figure out how does this risk apply to you, how does it not apply to you. So, um, right. That's it. So at the, at the at the basic fundamental, um, you have to understand what the risk is, um, how you define the risk, go through a risk assessment. Yes. So yeah, that's 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 amazing. That's basically, what we are doing actually now. Yeah. This is this is fun stuff. This is fun stuff. So so, come tell us about how how you how you grew up. I know you grew up in Ghana, yeah. and uh, so share a little bit about your background, then, so that people know that uh, you are you just didn't drop to America to do all this oh, no. amazing yeah. risk stuff. This is yeah. I love this risk stuff. It, it, I'm oh I'm just thinking about a friend I used to uh, have back in Brenton College. He, he was just yeah. a black swan thinker. So I'm just thinking about that right now. Yeah. So so I grew up so, I grew up in I grew up in Kumasi to start off with. So the oh the, wow the earliest memory I have is um we 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 lived in the so Bahaba Um okay so this this is probably in KG. So KG I went okay. to Grace Baptist for kindergarten and then I left Grace Baptist to go to Kings Old Sites. Um, so I did okay. Old Sites from Do, Those from Kumasi would know. Yeah, they would know. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Kings is Kings is huge. So anybody who went to Kings would know. Okay. Who lived in Kumasi yeah. would know. So I did Old Sites from KG to Class Five, and then I went to USC GSS. Um, so USC Primary. Okay. I remember this this probably an achievement that she yeah. talked about. So USC Primary. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Before you get into USC primary, you have to write an entrance exam. Um, so okay. I wrote the entrance exams to be able to get to primary six. And then I okay. did so good that they were like, oh, you're so good. So your sister can come along. So my sister was born. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, so oh, then, uh, that's right. 
Wow, I knew that school uh, because I was at uh, Unity Hall in, in USD. So oh, yeah, we yeah. normally would make a bypass there and then we get to US. There was a hospital there. I don't know whether it's still yeah, there. Tech, tech, it was it's still there. I did um I did primary and GSS in USC GSS. Um okay. and then from there I went to Presec, the best school ever okay. in my life. Um, oh wow, wow. We should have you then uh, yeah. last year, but it's okay. <laughs> so but but going back to my growing up, um, I was the only boy, two sisters. Um, my dad was very much in business growing up, he was in Timba, and my mom was a teacher. Um, okay. And then looking wow. back, teachers I don't know what to do well. Yeah, looking back, I need to sit <laughs> on this. Um, and I'll tie it all back though. So looking back, I think one one good decision that my mom made was. I didn't understand it back then, though. She really pushed for us to leave Kings to go to USC JSS. Um, okay. And then her thinking was, I want you to be connected to people, people who have wow. a bigger reach, right? Um, I didn't know that about then, back then. But now I can't Exposure. Kind of yeah. So exposure, mm. exactly. So so that was that. Um, yeah. But then back to exposure, right? So in JSS, when we're deciding where to go for high school, um, Obviously, I'm in Kumasi, mm -hmm. so everybody was choosing Pempe, Pempe was, Pempe was, Pempe was. Yes. Uh, and yes. Um, yes. Those are the top two schools in Kumasi. And in Ghana. I, I could say probably, <laughs> it's probably 10 or 15 of us were like, oh, we are going to Presec. And I remember people were like, why are you going to Presec? Why would you go to Presec? But in hindsight, going to Presec actually helped a lot. Um, I built a lot of skills, survival skills in Presec because it was very tough. Yes. Wow. Um, just the independence in terms of learning on your own, right? Because you just have to figure on stuff your own, out. Yes. Yeah. So um, I, I don't toot my yes. about it too much. Wow. Presec. Yes. He, I mean, he, he, I mean, undoubtedly, Presec is one of the top top schools. Mm -hmm. It has always been. I'll, I'll put it that way. And they are very very strong in the sciences. So yeah. so how I many did you did you read? Sci did you, are you from a science background or you you were from finance you did accounting and all those uh economics and those so you know, per sec, i did, I did uh, science biology, what, what, biology what, science, biology uh, science. Uh, yes because i know Presec is a very strong science school yeah. and uh and we, what we were talking about we did is that we, ghana has a science and math quiz inter inter school science and math yeah. quiz and we're just i was just shading him a little bit because my my alma mater beat them uh, last year so <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. yeah yes uh, yes that, that's how that's the that's the latest way of losing right from polit from politicians to everywhere wherever they lose this anyway. <laughs> so we <You're> understand <laughs> wow so you did biology i did biology um and I think so in primary school, now nah, in JSS, um, mm -hmm. I had I had an incident, I had an injury um right around about right in my BC. Um okay. I went climbing wall, I slipped and then I I impaled oh. myself on the stem of a tree. Oh, so, uh, oh man, sorry yeah, about that. So I went through like six months with wood stuck in me because they couldn't find oh, it. Goodness. So going through that process, um I did they like, puncture your lungs? Oh no! It was just my armpit. Thankfully, okay. Thank no God. Death damage, nothing like that. Um, mm. but I wanted to be a doctor for the longest time. Going through that. Um, okay. And then Presec happened, and then we had this math teacher. He was mm -hmm. so he made math so easy and made math so likable. So wow. And Presec, he 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 piqued my interest in actuarial science. He's like, oh, okay. there's this course that you can do in university. It's called actuarial science. If you're good okay. with math. And I was very good in math, um, wow. all through primary, even JSS and then SS. I remember normally when, when the results come, English, I'll probably score maybe 70, 75, and then math will come, and then I'm like, yeah, you blown it. 99, 100, <laughs> 100. So I always, I always relied on math. Um, wow. So he piqued my interest, and then when, when the results came, um, I had to decide whether I want to do medicine or go do math. Um, yes. But then the decision was made easier. I don't. I don't really like blood, so I was like, okay. okay, cool. Let's just stick yes. with math. And then I think it was our batch that they started the first actuarial program at UNC, UST. Oh wow! Yeah, Ken UST. Wow. Yeah, Ken UST. Yes. Ken UST. Yeah. Lucky so you. Did, 
So my 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 class were part of that three hour class. Um, okay. And we did it. We did four years. It was amazing. I mean, because I like math. Um, and then the overarching aim has always been to continue in actuarial. Um, yes. But again, to my story, another point that I would, I would mention, and once I tie back, it all come to. Um, yes. There was this lecturer who I remember after our defense, he was like, Kwame, if you get the opportunity, go out of, out of Ghana. You don't need to stay in Ghana. Um, wow. Just be open to going out of Ghana. Right? He said in passing, it was just me and a very good friend of mine who's now in Australia. He told okay. us in passing and that was it. But we finished, we went, we did our service. And funny enough, right after our service, my buddy left and he went to Australia to go do his master's in finance. He's now okay. a doctor. Hopefully he'll be on the next, he'll be on the next yeah. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was great. Um, then, so after, after tech, I did my national service at SNIT. Um, I was in the okay. department. That was also a very eye-opening. That was a good story. fit. Yes. Yeah, that was yeah. a good fit. Because it was straight from Arturia, and then that's that was around the time um, Ghana was figuring out the pension. So the tier okay. system wasn't there now. Um, I think okay. after I think one tier two. Thinking. Yeah. So yeah, we I, I was in charge of literally calculating people's pension. All right. So oh, there wow. was a claim, the claim department of SNET. Um, if if there was a particular case that had issues, they'll bring it to the actual department and then we'll kind of finalize and make sure that um, everything was working. We have a mod, we had a model in Excel that we're using, it was kind of cool. Um, wow. So we did, I did, I did all of um, all of national service. Um, and in case in point, around that time, that's when the Ivory Coast war was going on. So okay. there was a lot of French people who came into Ghana in 2011 back then. Um, I met some, I I learned from some people who weren't Ghanaian, um, and that also helped me. So ultimately, after national service, I had to decide. Um, right around that time, my dad had helped me get into this uh, management program, training program for Stambik. Okay. Um, I, was, I think I was, I was at the latter stages into getting into the program, and then I had applied... <laughs> I had applied for, I think it was Illinois State University to get actual okay. master's in actuarial. Science, okay. Illinois State is a very good, they have a very good actuarial program. Um, okay. Funny enough, I never heard from them. It blows my mind <laughs> after now. After I today. Heard, after today, I never heard from them. So I, I was like, what is this? What's going on? Am I not supposed to leave Ghana? Am I just supposed to go do this <laughs> management training program? And then I was like, let me just apply to Colombia, right? Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so that's, I told people. It's like that. I didn't, I, I honestly didn't know Colombia was Colombia when I was applying, right? Sometimes so, that is very good in life because that would have scared a little bit. It have scared you exactly, a little bit. Exactly. Because they are big school. So, so when, when I got, when I got, when I got um, admission, um, I remember I went to my uncle who is like, even till now, he's still my mentor my dad's younger brother. And I was like, okay. I have this management training program going on. And I also have this application from acceptance from Columbia. Mm. Which one do you think I should do? <laughs> and then he just told me, he told me, do you know what Columbia is? Go research on Columbia. Exactly. <laughs> I went, did my research on Columbia. I was like, okay, cool. Let's go to Columbia. Um, but the 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 morale there is the fact that I didn't know much, right? I was open. That was good. Um, and actually, it, it turned out great. So, and then the other part of my story started. So I came to the US. Um, I was at Columbia. It was it wasn't easy. It was a great shock, right? Um, mm -hmm. At least if nothing, the cold on my ear, right? <laughs> it was so cold. I could I could never get around the fact that it was very sunny during the day yes. and, it was and very cold. cold. Very like, cold. Why? Is the sun not working? Um, <laughs> uh, um, and 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 my experience at Columbia was um, I, I I tell people I don't think I I fully utilized my experience at Columbia, unfortunately, mostly because I didn't know you didn't know what what you had. Yeah, I didn't know one what I had. 
and then one the power of people um okay so in class it was mostly um the class was mostly asian heavy asian so it was yes folks from taiwan china singapore and then there mm -hmm. were some americans and then there yes. were some europeans too yes but i mean from just coming from ghana and then hearing from people about oh you have to keep to yourself you have to focus and do stuff uh -huh. i wasn't as social that I, I normally was even in Ghana. okay um and and couple with the fact that classes was also late at night so classes started normally around maybe 2 p.m or maybe 4 p.m so okay. it's mostly go into school come back learn go into school come back learn yes um, but later on i mean at the at probably maybe five months or three months to finish with Columbia, I started making some good friends that friends. I still friends up to now. Um, okay. So 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 there was that. So I went to Columbia. And then after Columbia, I decided to, um, I tried to work. So that's where my first job came in. Um, I started working for okay. an insurance company. Um, okay. So insurance companies, they call them a, a managing general agent. So basically they write insurance for big insurance companies in the stead okay. of them and then pretty much get a percentage of the premium. So I was okay. working directly under an actuary. Um, and then all that we're doing is, I mean, for lack of better, we're, we're troubleshooting their whole system, right? So we're just fine tuning right. that in the writing process and the back, backroom staff process so that everything runs smoothly. So we reduce cost and all that. So yes. it's a bunch of coming up with reports, coming up with ratios to share with CEOs and whatnot. Um, I liked that role very much because um, it was my first role from like in the US. And then it, it was it was a role where it wasn't really strange and that's, this is what you did. It was okay. do whatever that you wanted. It was like mini projects. You do this, you're done, okay. it's over. You do this, you're done, you present on it, it's over. So it was like fixing problems here and there. Um, so that, that will give you a lot of good experience then. Exactly, yeah. So, Mm -hmm. And then one, one thing, so what we're normally, the core of what we're doing was analyzing data, right? Um, okay. And, and one block that we had was I would talk to IT, tell them these are the requirements I need to pull some particular data. And it'll probably take them a month and a half to pull the data. So I remember oh my, my boss was like, the, the only thing they do is they write queries in SQL. Um, yeah, SQL queries, yeah. Do you, do you think it would be good to learn SQL? Yeah, sure. Oh, I'm yes. I, I, with, my, with a math background, yeah, SQL exactly. is all logic. <laughs> yeah, exactly, logic. So it's just logic, then, yeah. <laughs> I was open to it, and then I was like, oh, cool. So I learned, I learned SQL on the job. Um, I used it here and there over over the course of my career, but then that's still a skill set I have. Like, I could wow. write queries if I want. Um, SQL, and I learned out there, too. So, oh, wow. It came to a point, and I'll give you context and it makes sense. So I lived in Harlem, and then the, the work was in Melville, Long Island. It's a okay. two-hour commute one way. I oh, used, that's a killer. I used two trains and a bus if I was on time, or two trains and a taxi if I was late. Oh, boy. And, but even though the work was great, whenever I left work, it was just, just it was depressing. Up. Just the commute, <laughs> right? Um, especially when it was snowing or it was cold. I was like, why am I doing this? So yeah. I, I had to decide whether I wanted to stay in New York, move to Long Island for the work, because yeah. I couldn't do the commute, or just move out of New York, just try my, yes. my luck with, save, with the US. Save some, save some taxes. Yeah. New so, York is taxed too much. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I literally, I literally googled financial cities in the US. North New Carolina York came in number one. Charlotte uh -huh. came in number two. And I was yes. like, okay, cool. let's go to Charlotte. Um, uh, oh wow! I, Charlotte. Um, I did. I didn't know anybody here when I was moving. Um, I didn't necessarily have family here when I was moving. I didn't know I had family here. That I should put it that way. So I get here, um, and then I found out I have a long distance uncle. And so long oh, distance wow. happens. Um, that helps. I've made good friends here, right? So, but then the story continues. I I, I started working for Score, a reinsurance okay. company. You mentioned it. Um, okay. So yes, I did. Um, so insurances, 
I have a, I, I know I might lose a, if I lose a, I, I, I don't want to be without a, so give me yes. some version of a, right? So okay. it could be the same one or it could be a depreciated version of a. So wh okay. when I do that, I put the risk on the insurance company. Yes. Well, reinsurance is the same thing, but that way is the insurance company seeking insurance from somebody else, right? So okay. it's another level of insurance. So insurance company. So who, who, teach, who teaches the teacher, basically? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, or, or who watches the watchman? <laughs> yeah. It's insurance company so is going for it going for insurance from another company so um okay so, so let, let me put it in context let me put it in context so it may be that maybe um let's say a big building right big mm -hmm. skyscraper building in maybe any of the big cities in africa let's say accra or, or abuja or nairobi very big and yeah. um they they insure it so let, let's say you insure that building in in accra ghana chances are when something happens to that building that insurance company may not have the capital exactly. base to be able to replace that building for you mm -hmm. so the smartest thing for them to do is to reinsure it with let's say another insurance company let's say lloyd's uh, insurance in london or something london, like yeah. that and they have the massive capital base to oh, right. be able to to cover okay yeah, so yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm i'm a little bit knowledgeable in uh yeah, <laughs> in yeah, insurance. yeah. yeah. so so I did that okay. for a little bit with Score as a French company. And then well, that was also a very nice role. I mean, I didn't do it for long though, but basically okay. we were in charge of covering Latin America business. Um, so from there, and then I started working in insurance in, in, in consulting, my first consulting role with NTT okay. Data. Um, okay. And that, that was around the time that I kind of veered off my heavy actuarial, heavy... Um, okay and actual background i should say because i mean reinsurance is still actual um, i was still working yes. on that actuary at score but mm -hmm. i did that because i had a conversation with someone at school who told me that i should be open-minded and know that there's not only one way to success right mm -hmm. so back then all my i was very laser focused on actual actual that's all i wanted to do okay um, it's not it's not it's not a slight actual being an actual is a fantastic career uh, wow but then, i'm gonna ask you about that you know okay. when, when we were growing up me i didn't know much about actuary until when i got to london for the first time and i was studying yeah. they used to make this joke tell me if it's if it's if it's just a joke or it's true uh -huh. they said if you get close to actuaries they can predict when you will die oh yeah is that yeah, true? yeah yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> so so basically right there's 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 something called a life table Okay. Right, it's a life table that, that uses what well, probably maybe a million people or maybe 10 million people and then they, okay. they they do the table in such a way that just to predict out of a million people by age five some will die age six some will okay. die i mean it's just natural right i mean it's probably, yes. concrete probability yeah so they can use a life table to say you have a probability of dying i maybe say age 64 65 right it's do you ever check those things? Do you ever check those things for yourself? Oh, yeah. I was actually I was actually checking the life expectancy quite recently. I found out that Ghana life expectancy is in the 60s. Nigeria okay. is in the 50s, which is very, very okay. troubling. But <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's I think it would be a function of it would be a function of healthcare delivery. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, and the general care. Yes, access to healthcare, and and because Ghana's numbers are not that uh, much, access to healthcare will be better compared to yeah. Nigeria, where it's like everyone is just packed on top of each other. I mean, not literally, but it's heavily densely populated with with yeah, maybe li limited uh, health facilities. Yeah. Wow, th this is this is uh, yeah. amazing. I, I know I've been going on and on and on, but yeah. <laughs> this is... I promise I'll tie quickly. So yes, it's tied for us. The, uh -huh. the entity led me to my first project with Bank of America. And again, okay. at Bank of America, we were supposed to implement a testing utility or something okay. I've never done before. I was mm -hmm. like, sure, I'll do it. Um, we did it so well, the bank decided to convert some people to full time, right? Mm -hmm. And around that time, I had to make a decision do I want to stick with consulting or do I want to go to Bank of America? Um, okay. Based on certain decisions and the fact that I wanted to go back and get my MBA, 
I was like, okay. let's take the Bank of America. Um, and again, okay. I was open minded to that. And then yes. I came full time with Bank of America, started, and that's why I said I had various roles at Bank of America, and then ended mm -hmm. up in Sika. Um, okay. And then now I was working, I did Sika for three years. I was like, I, I still want to understand more about financial risk, right? Um, and then I decided to leave Bank of America, get into consulting. And then Again. now I'm actually working with a small, a small credit union, helping them to implement their ERM program, something I probably would never do at Bank of America. Yes. So the overarching, the overarching reason, I mean, the, the, the point here is the fact that um, I've always tried as much as possible to seek counsel from people. Um, whenever mm. I have to make decisions. Um, yeah. And I've always tried as much as possible to be as open-minded as possible. As right? possible, just, yes. Just not to box myself to, this is how it's supposed to be. I am stuck with this, right? Um, yes. And and, wow. and, and, and I, I made that comment about how I didn't leverage the the difference, the differences that I, 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 I came to at Columbia, right? Yes. I didn't know that it was good to connect with people that weren't like you're connect to people that you weren't used to um yes after that um after my first role my my, my first job after columbia and then subsequently all through score um and even at bank of america i've grown friendships with people that they have very different background from me yes um, the guy who told me that you don't necessarily need to be an actuary he was actually an actuary right <laughs> but, but he 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 gave me a perspective that I was like, you could go for other stuff. Um, if it's risk, you could actually go into risk management. You, I'm an actuary, but you could be a CR, right? You could be a chief yes. risk officer for a company. Yes, so yes. It's different ways to look at it. So I was receptive to advice. I was open minded, and I was I was I was willing to take risk, right? So yes. Leaving leaving New York to Charlotte, um, I talked. Not knowing not knowing anybody. You this, did that. I was like, yeah. yeah, I did that. But then at that point, I was like, I mean, what do I have to lose? Worst case scenario, yes. I come back to New York. So those yes. have called me over time. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. That that's good because you you've just actually uh, uh, pushed unknowingly into my next set of question, my next oh. question line. I was, you know, the next question I based on what you see, right, and based on what you've gone through, the journey that you've taken, and Mm -hmm. and and all of that um what kind of nuggets um, can you leave with uh, my audience you know somebody who's young who's trying to uh, start a life basically uh mm -hmm. maybe you know, the person may even be in, in college right now or in or uni as the british people would say yeah. uh, and they are trying to you know, charter because maybe they're even interested because I know that for, for you to get into actuary, you have to be good at math, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so for for people like that, and also for the general masses, some people to they want to probably work in a developed environment, they don't even know what the work culture is, yeah. they don't know, they don't know all the nuances. You've, you've been through it all, so can, can you share some few nuggets? Uh, for young people who are looking to take the journey that you have taken. I think yeah. that would be very, very helpful. So so, so the first thing I'll say is, if, if you are watching this video, mm -hmm. right, you are, you're on yeah. the right path. Yeah. The fact that you are seeking knowledge, right? Yes. So I don't think it's everybody who will be watching this video. No. Nope. So whoever is watching this video is taking the right path. So it's, it's there's this philosophy that I, I hold by that um, you are what you see, right? Mm -hmm what you feel is capable is what you've been exposed to. Right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, it's true. If, 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 if you want to be a doctor, you only want to be a doctor because you've seen a doctor before. If you haven't seen an astronaut before, you can't even in your in your diction, you can't put an astronaut. So it's true. You should you should be curious and then you should be a sponge if you're a kid, if 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 you are younger to be able to accept all knowledge. That's not. I don't think there's bad information whatsoever. Um, mm. Just learn as much as you can, because um, it, it it would it would open you to the many options that there are there. Right? Um, mm -hmm. Don't be don't be easy to box yourself into something particular. Um, right. You should see yourself as a blank state, and then yes. you should keep, keep writing the story. I'm still writing my story. Yes, you are. So, and it's going to get more more exciting. Exactly. So it's. 
So if, 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 if you are up and coming, if, if you are trying to figure out what you do to your next step, just be open to learn from people who have done it because there's no point reinventing the wheel if the wheel is already yes. there. Yes. You, can, you can learn from their mistakes, which is most people will gladly talk about it because they probably <laughs> regret it, right? You can learn from their mistakes and then that will be a sprint forward for that. Um, yes. Um, another point another point that I probably would say, I mean, very specific here in the US, and that's something mm -hmm. I'm still actually trying to work on here. Yes. It's the fact that more, more, more often than not, because we come from, we come from Africa and then we are in the diaspora, there's this innate um, feeling that we have to make it on our own. Um, okay. and, and it shouldn't be the case. Right? Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. So I'm, I'm a, I mean, I'll go back to Chi. I'm sorry for no. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's, there's a saying about how prior bako ibu right? Um, okay, okay. So, so what that what that basically means that if you go one broomstick, it's uh, no. Actually, it's even in the Bible. It yeah, says yeah. a th a three four cord is not easily broken. Exactly. So if you have just one cord, it's very easy to rip it apart. But if you have a three four cord, it's not easily broken. <laughs> that's a pro that's an Africa a Ghanaian proverb. <laughs> if, if, if you happen to find yourself here in the US or wherever in the in the diaspora, I know it's a common thing to say, oh, people will be in my business, what what's not. Yeah. Um in the end, it's good to have a support system. Right? Yes. Um, that is so priceless if you are outside of the country. Because mm -hmm. if you're in Ghana, you could always go to your auntie or you could go to your uncle. Yes. But it can be very lonely here. Mm. That, in as much as it's great to say I'm going to hustle and make it, creating a good core system and good support system will obviously yes. help you. Um, yes. and, I, and I can attest to that. There are people wow. that I can always call up if I have something going on just to bounce ideas off. Yes. There are people who call me, we bounce ideas off at each other. Yes. I mean, Bible says iron sharpness. Iron I know. Yes, it's true. It's true. So, so it's, it, that's that's also also core. If, if you happen to leave Africa, come to diaspora, you should connect make yourself. Just make, yeah, just make mm. sure you're very, very connected. I mm. mean, it, it kind of touches back on the fact that you need exposure, right? So, yes. Um, so, wow. And, and, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah. Wow, that, 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 this, that, that's even more than enough. I mean, this, those are two heavy, heavy, uh, what do you call it, uh, nuggets, uh, you know, uh, very, very heavy because I, I, I told you, I've, I've interviewed, there was one gentleman I interviewed, and one, I would say 90% of what he attributes his success to and what he's doing was because of this, what we just talked about. He mm -hmm. just plugged himself in the system, he connected, he didn't just even connect himself to the African or Ghanaian community, he just connected himself across board. Mm -hmm. And his first job that he had, uh, the, the network that brought him the work was his college professor. Yeah, that helped him get his first gig at, uh, I think it's a JP Morgan or so. Mm -hmm. And then he's just taken it from there. Yeah, and, and he yeah. says, they still, the connections that he had, especially in uh, college when he was doing his master's, they are mm -hmm. still relevant today. Yeah. So, Kwame, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. Amazing yeah. and, and fantastic. We are so excited. We are, we are, we are. I mean, oh, then we thank you so much for oh, yeah. spending this time with us. And, and I, I know, I know that this episode is going to strike a nerve for yeah. for for our listeners and our and, and, and our subscribers. It's going to be amazing. And Kwame, we can't thank you enough. Yeah. Uh, it's been my pleasure. It's been my pleasure. You're, you're a blessing, and you are a torch bearer yeah. for for for. Uh, us and the young people who come from Africa. We we look forward to seeing people like you who are trail, you blaze the trail and then uh, uh, many more young people uh, can follow. And uh, But don't don't be checking people's death uh, date though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the actual choice. I think that's the actual Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate you being here. Yeah, awesome. Pleasure. Pleasure.